And I quote, only the best is good enough for Africa. 100 years on, we meet here inspired by these words to give to ourselves through our children and posterity the best in this new era of learning. One beyond boundaries because every child deserves a digital education. My name is Jerry Ajololo, and on behalf of the government of Ghana, acting through the Ministry of Education and the Ghana Education Service, I'd like to say good morning to you all, our fathers, our mothers, my brothers, my sisters, sons and daughters, friends and well-wishers of our beloved motherland Ghana. And welcome to this great day in history happening right here at the Accra International Conference Center on TV, on radio, and online. We welcome you to the launch of the Ghana Smart Schools Project, an extension of the government of Ghana's free SHS and TVET digitalization agenda to transform Ghana's economy by equipping Ghanaian students with 21st century learning opportunities for them to compete globally. If this is not worthy of a round of applause, I don't know what else is. If I'm glad, I'm glad for one man in whose lifetime he's made a promise and that promise has been fulfilled in time and on record. Ladies and gentlemen, make welcome the promise keeper, Nana Adodankwa Akufuado, President of our Republic. Mr. President, there are no words, simply gratitude. He's come this far because of the support, overwhelming support, from the Vice President of our Republic, make welcome His Excellency, Dr. Mohamed Baumia. The arrowhead spearheading the reform of Ghana's education, Ghana's Minister for Education, the Honorable Dr. Yao Osayedu Chung, MP. We make welcome in a show of ministerial solidarity, the Minister for Chieftaincy and Religious Affairs, the Honorable Stephen Asamoah Boateng. Help me receive the Deputy Ministers of Education, the Honorable John and Team Fojo, MP, and the Honorable Professor Kingsley Nyako. We make welcome, ladies and gentlemen, the Minister Designate for Information, the Honorable Fatima Abu Bakar. We make welcome the Minister Designate for Local Government and Rural Development, the Honorable Martin Ej Kosa. You. The Deputy Minister Designate for Communications and Digitalization, the Honorable Charles Achampong, MP. We're joined by His Royal Majesty, the Manfihini and Chidomhini of Akwapim, Nana Ansasasraku III. Nana Yamawakwaba. In the same vein, we're joined by the President of the Osus II Council, Noche. Professor Ni Note Owo the fourth. We we'll receive with gladness the representative of the National Chief Imam, his spokesperson, Sheikh Arim Yao Shaibu. The chairs and members of the Parliamentary Select Committees on Education, Communication, and Declaration also join us. Please, a resounding round of applause for them. It will be remiss of me not to acknowledge directors of ministries, departments, and agencies, heads, teachers, and students of selected senior high schools and TVET institutions, distinguished guests, members of the press, ladies and gentlemen. We say a warm welcome to you. Let today be a legacy for ourselves and for posterity as we share in the joy of our children as they receive world-class education. Welcoming us warmly, it's my pleasure to invite the Director General of the Ghana Education Service. Make welcome Dr. Eric Nkansa. Thank you very much. The President of the Republic, His Excellency Nana Dudankwa Kufuadu, Vice President of the Republic, and the flag bearer of the New Patriotic Party, His Excellency 
Dr. Mahamudu Baumia, the Minister for Education, Honorable Dr. Yaose Edichum, Minister of Information Designate, Honorable Fatima Tiabu Bakari, the Minister for uh, Chieftaincy and Religious Affairs, Honorable Lasemua Boateng, the Deputy Minister for Communications and Digitalization Designate, the Members of Parliament and Ministers here in present, the Deputy Minister for Education, Honorable Intim Fogio, in charge of General Education, and Deputy Minister for Education Designate, TVET, Honorable Professor Kinsley Nyakum. The Chief Director of the Ministry of Education, Mrs. Mamli Andrews. The Rep of the Head of Civil Service. The Head of Local Government Service, Dana Atwater. Heads of Agencies under the Ministry of Education. The Deputy Director General is in charge of Quality and Access and Management Service of Ghana Education Service. Members of the Diplomatic Community. Our development partners, heads of second cycle institutions, teachers and students, distinguished invited guests, the leadership of our teacher unions here in present, ladies and gentlemen, all other protocols duly observed. Good morning. It is with great pleasure and a deep sense of pride that I, on behalf of the Honorable Minister for Education, Honorable Dr. Yaosei Edichum, welcome you all to this historic event as we gather to witness the launch of the Ghana Smart Schools Project by our visionary president, His Excellency Nanado Dankwa Ekufuado. Your Excellencies, Honorable Ministers, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, you are warmly welcome. The theme for the project, Education Without Boundaries, is visionary and aligns with our mandate at the Ghana Education Service to ensure that we deliver quality, inclusive, and relevant education for the benefit of all Ghanaian children of school-going age without discrimination. Towards the realization of this mandate, the service has been implementing programs and policies formulated by the Ministry of Education to ensure that learning outcomes are improved, teaching skills are enhanced, and education is made more impactful and relevant for the benefit of all. Since 2017, the Nanado Akufuado government has implemented cutting-edge reforms and policies aimed at improving educational standards and equipping our learners with 21st century skills required to participate fully in this fourth industrial revolution. These include the implementation of the free senior high school program and the operationalization of our STEM schools, ably championed by our hardworking Minister for Education, Honorable Dr. Yao Osei Edichum. This morning, we have gathered here to witness the rollout of the many innovative interventions in our education sectors. One of them, the Smart Schools Project. This is a program designed to revolutionize our classrooms in our senior high schools with innovative technology to make teaching and learning much easier. The introduction of the One Student, One Tablet program represents a visionary step towards bridging the digital divide and ensuring that every student in Ghana has access to the transformative power of technology. By placing a tablet in the hands of each student, we are not only providing them with the window to a world of knowledge but also equipping them with the skills necessary to succeed in an increasingly digitalized world. As the Director General of Ghana Education Service, I am honored and humbled to witness the realization of this initiative, which embodies our collective dedication 
to nurturing the next generation of leaders, innovators, and change makers. The impact of this program will extend far beyond the confines of our classrooms, shaping the future of our nation and empowering our youth to reach new heights of academic excellence. On behalf of the Ghana Education Service, I extend my heartfelt gratitude to the President of the Republic, His Excellency Nana Dodankwa Ekufuado, for his unwavering commitment to education and to all our partners and stakeholders who have contributed to making this initiative a reality. Together, we embark on a journey that will redefine the educational landscape of Ghana and pave the way for a brighter, more inclusive future for all. On this note, I wish to once again, on behalf of the Honorable Minister for Education, welcome all of you warmly to this event. May today's launch inspire us to continue striving towards excellence in education for the benefit of all our learners and our nation. I thank you for your attention.
this is how the good people of Ghana, represented by the Noyam Dance Institute, show their love and appreciation for this bold initiative by the government of Ghana. Please, a round of applause once more. We say many thanks to you, the Director General of the Ghana Education Service, Dr. Eric Nkansa, for that warm note of welcome, calling us to excellence amongst many others. This morning, Mr. President, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to give to you the future of Ghana's education. I'm talking about the 500 strong students gathered in this room. Would you please rise and let's celebrate you. And there they are. For you we labor, for you we toil. And do this at great cost for your future. Please be seated. It is my pleasure to also acknowledge a big C joining us online of students from the various regions, from the eastern region. Make welcome Every Girl Senior High School. We make welcome from the Greater Accra region, Laboni Senior High School. We make welcome from the central region, Ghana National College. Let's make welcome from the Volta region, Maoli School. Let's receive from the Savannah region, Bole Senior High School. From Ashanti region, Prempe College. From the Upper West Region, Wa Senior High School. And from the Ahafo Region, Ola Girls Senior High School. And this is the first installment of students joining us online. I shall be acknowledging another set shortly. In moving on, Mr. President, Mr. Vice President, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we would like to have an understanding of what has gone into the working mechanisms of this great project. For the next few minutes, please lend your attention to the screen for a production and experiential documentary. on knowledge and imparting it to students. Over time, students gained access to textbooks and libraries to expand their learning beyond the classroom. But this often meant struggling with the burden of carrying heavy stacks of books. A few years ago, Ghana introduced laptops in schools for teachers to enhance their learning processes. With a generation that is increasingly tech savvy, it is crucial to once again modernize and transform the current education system to foster learning among these students in the most engaging and innovative ways. Ghana has undergone major education transformation. Uh, we believe that the last seven years have seen transformation uh, the nation has never seen before. Whether it's education infrastructure, whether it's reform of the curriculum, uh, teacher training in every aspect or sphere of education, there has been some great changes. The current style of learning is centered on the traditional mode of teaching where the student is expected to copy notes and study everything theoretically. In this case, we don't get to leave what we learn. The traditional style of teaching limits me very much in the sense that most of the time teachers come to class to dictate notes. You might not hear what the teacher is saying or the teacher might be speaking too fast or too slow, leading to potholes in your notes. I might decide to go to my fellow classmate for her notes, but she might have left potholes or might have spelled a word wrongly or I might have even misheard the teacher. And this totally changes the meaning of the notes. We average study five subjects a day, and the number of books, considering the test books, exercise books, and notebook, maximum of ten. Maximum of ten. When I carry those heavy textbooks to class, usually my back aches a lot. When I'm in the classroom, I get tired because of the movement of the books back and forth, and it sometimes I get sleepy in class, which really affects the whole learning process. This current style of teaching and learning creates lazy students, I might say. Because since it's based on theory, there's no practicals, students don't get the zeal to go further into research or research more about what they are taught. They only wait for the teacher 
consume what the teacher gives them and then when it's time for examination, they go and then pour it out. In my line of duty, actually handling abstract lessons is, is a bit of a challenge. See, there are lessons that in school you know that you like the subject, but this particular lesson I don't get to understand. So you would have to change your lesson methods and then you maneuver through the period, you ask questions and they are like, oh, they are getting it at the till end. You ask them, they say, madam, I don't understand. What don't you understand? Then they're like the whole shoe. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really challenging. Sometimes the time is not enough because a period is one hour, two periods at most. It has to be two periods, which is two hours a day. So sometimes I have to vary my teaching techniques so instead of using the role play, for instance, or a stage performance where they have to act, maybe as we are reading a drama test, I have to vary it and use question and answers, discussion, or the brainstorming method. Students have different abilities, and they have different needs. So as a teacher, whatever lessons are you plan, you should plan in such a way that you don't leave any student out. So the difficulty is how you plan your lessons such that you make provision for all different abilities, all the different ability students in your class. We are supposed to teach for students to understand. Now in teaching methods, you are supposed to use multiple you know, options for them to understand practically. And considering how students understand concepts, you need to you know, sub-break these ideas for them to understand. And you need a lot of things to help them understand these concepts. In recent years, several countries have embraced the use of tablets in their educational system, leading to remarkable advancements in learning outcomes. From South Korea to Finland, these nations have set a global benchmark for integrating technology into education. This initiative has not only improved access to information, but has also enhanced the overall learning experience. What we are about to do, about to learn, is the beginning of something so profound for our nation. Imagine entering into a school where everybody has access to computer and therefore can learn the various software tools, uh, the various application tools, and begin to create apps that can be used to solve a number of problems that confront our nation. This is a new dawn. A great things are about to happen to our nation. The transformation it's near and it's here and I'm excited about it. We looked at who the intended users are and in this case students at a senior high level, both Tibet and Ghana Education Service. This tablet is for learning purpose and so that also influenced the specifications for the tablet. When you look at the project I always say that the focus is not on the device, because if it's just a device, we can get on the market. But this tablet comes with a teaching and learning management system, and that is the unique aspect of the project. On this platform, students have access to all the approved textbooks. What this does is it helps us reach the textbook to student ratio. We have videos on every subject or topic uploaded on the platform. They also have EPUB versions that they can use. The other interesting aspect of the platform is also um, the past questions from WAYEC. And we have a memorandum of understanding with WAYEC to upload past questions on the platform. Now, the beautiful aspect of the platform is its AI to be able to give prior questions to students. So for instance, instead of just going there to memorize and solve maybe one year um, past questions, maybe 2019, you can pick, the system can pick at random and give to you to be able to try your hands on. With the inception of one tablet for one student policy, I believe it is a very laudable idea where students are going to do away with loads of books and they will not have to buy a lot of textbooks because I believe everything will be embedded in the tablet. And once they have the tablets with them, they are good to go. Teachers and students certainly would work with these tablets to ensure that there's absolute good teaching and learning. First and foremost, 
teachers will be able to use the tablets even when students are not in school, school session. When students are home, they too will be able to use the tablets. They can use the tablets for research. It's going to make it very easy for teachers to teach. Even if the students are not even carrying them home, they can still, during contact hours, it's easier to use these tablets for communication. The tablets will be used, one, to facilitate um, learning, uh, both teachers and students, and also among the students themselves. And it will also create um, learner-centered um, knowledge construction. Getting the SM1 tablet, well, once they have the notes on it, they have videos on it, they, can, they have lectures on it that they can study on their own time, it will help to boost them. I think the tablet is bringing in all, is going to help them to really apply their critical thinking to be able to venture into creativity and innovation. Surely it will make teaching and learning very easy in terms of note taking and then the students to getting records. They will get they will have an updated record. What we are looking at for is having all the trade areas, both the male dominated uh, trades and female dominated trades, all the practicals will be put in there and it will make teaching and learning very, very easy. Apart from the learning management system, which is even loaded onto it, we also know that the, the students could have access to live broadcast, live lectures, or live tuition from one of the best and brightest minds across the country, which could be seen and um, could be followed, right, by all students, no matter where you find yourself across the country. The tablet will make learning more efficient because it brings about time saving. Student does not need to waste time carrying books to class. With the help of this tablet, we students will be able to learn on our own pace and then make research on topics we are being taught in class. Technology is invading the field of education at an ever increasing rate. It has made teaching and learning very interesting and interactive through the introduction of intuitive touch screen, just like the SM1 tablet that you are introducing to us. Due to how these tablets are programmed, we wouldn't be bothering ourselves carrying books enough uh, plenty books to and from school each and every time which will help better our health condition. Yeah, I could install apps that could give me enough information on the subject and broaden my understanding of the subject. Even when there, the notes are a lot on the tablet, they can easily highlight the points, learn it in briefs and when they have enough time they come back and learn the whole thing. With the introduction of the SM1 tablet as the new technology engaging. Um, students, one, uh, participate in class, that is engaging. Re, uh, that is, teacher pose a question and a student has the right or uh, the opportunity to answer those questions using the SM1 tablet. The SM1 tablet will go a long way to support students to uh, develop the critical thinking, problem solving, and creative skills that will help to develop them both academically and then personally. There are students who are underserved, especially those in the remote areas. In connection to our online libraries, OERs, that is the open educational resources. If they get these tablets, they are going to have access to all these line uh, contents and also have access to the OERs where they can watch videos, materials on topics that they have to be taught. With this SM1 tablet, Many a time when our students get out of the school system, they, the confidence level is not really there. They go out to the world of you know, jobs and they are not that confident. But with this, I guess it's going to increase that confidence level. With this new um, um, curriculum core competences, I know we talk of digital literacy. So it is going to make our learners digitally literate. And aside that, they will be able to learn on their own. Our nation's fortunes will tremendously improve with digitalization. We haven't seen anything yet. This is what all of us have been waiting for. And finally, the future is here 
Today, the fourth industrial revolution, the fusion of the biological and electrical, which we are experiencing now, will not elude this nation with digitalization. This is the future and this is the present, and I'm excited about it. I think that Ghana's education, with the introduction of the SM1 tablet, the future, is a bright future. Remember that Ghana is doing something that no other African country that I'm aware of. So I expect that the future of education is going to be bright. You're going to have better quality education, more accessible education, more inclusive education. And the performance of the students we expect to be even better and better as we go forward. The Ghana Smart Schools project is part of a deliberate effort to address the digitalization agenda of my government to transform Ghana's economy. The project seeks to equip Ghanaian students with 21st century learning opportunities to be able to compete globally. Under this project, all public senior high school and TVET students will be supplied with tablets fully loaded with a customized learning management system. The system is available both online and offline with approved content. Technology will never replace teachers, but technology in the hands of great teachers is transformational. And so if you're joining us, if you're joining us on radio, on television, or online on the Facebook platform of Student Mate, we welcome you to the future of education as we launch the Ghana Smart Schools Project, a proud initiative of the Government of Ghana, which is an extension of the Government of Ghana's free SHS and TVET digitalization agenda to transform Ghana's economy by equipping Ghanaian students with 21st century learning opportunities to compete globally as we hand them one tablet equipped with every learning device. Please, a round of applause once again. And all this has been made possible because of the team that have worked tirelessly to make this a reality. Allow me to acknowledge all the directors. Would you please rise and let's celebrate you. <laughs> Leading the team, our chief director, our first female chief director, Madame Mamley Andrews. Please, a round of applause for them all. Thank you very much. Particularly grateful for this bold initiative, our students joining us across the country. I'd like to acknowledge the second batch from the Bono region, let's make welcome Sunyane Senior High School. Let's welcome also from the Bono East region, Techiman Senior High School. From the Northeast region, Wale Wale Senior High School. Wale Wale, the Vice President cannot see you. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for Wale Wale. Let's go to the Northern region and we go to Bisco Business High School. <laughs> to the OT region and we make welcome KJB Asato High School. <laughs> Let's receive from the Upper East region Navrongo Senior High School. From the Western region, Sakra de Senior High School. And finally, from the Western North region, Queens Girls Senior High School. Together, let's hear it up for them a resounding round of applause. Once to every man and nation comes a moment to decide. For him, it was about leaving a legacy. And at the call of the President of our Republic, 
he abandoned all to contribute his quota to the transformation of Ghana's education. Please welcome the Minister for Education, the Honorable Dr. Yao Osei Edutum, MP. Your Excellency, Nana Adu Dankwa Ekufuad, President of the Republic of Ghana. His Excellency, Dr. Mohamed Ubaumia, Vice President of the Republic of Ghana. And the flag bearer of the New Patriotic Party. Ministers of State here in Ghana, uh, my colleague Minister from Chieftains and Religious Affairs, Minister Designate for Minister of Information. Minister designate for local government and all other ministers, Deputy Minister of Education, Honorable Ntim Fojo, and the Deputy Minister designate for Education, uh, Professor uh, Kinsley. Heads of other agencies under the Ministry of Education, the Chief Director, Nana uh, Osu Manche, Nana Manfehne. Our development partners, head of local government and civil service, teacher unions are present. Our students and our friends from the media, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I'm excited to be here today. Uh, it's rare to have the president and the vice president at your ministry's event. <laughs> and today, history has been made. I see my boss, the president. I see my boss, the vice president. And that makes you humble when you are speaking. So, Mr. President, with your permission, I'll continue with my address. You know, most of you know that I like the S. Temple, but not when you're president and vice president. Because you can't miss anything that you have prepared. So, I'll stick to the script. But permit me to say, Ghana is in the fourth industrial revolution. And we want to leave. You know, in the first industrial revolution of the steam engine, Africa was not part of it. The second industrial revolution came, electricity, where are the fringes? The third industrial revolution of the computer, we used them, but did not build them. Now we are in the fourth industrial revolution. Time of the artificial intelligence, robotics time when we can combine biological and the physical, the electrical, bring about innovation that the world has never seen. The time of YouTube, where you can go in and see what the people have done and do yours. This is the moment of Africa. And this is Ghana's moment. And I'm super excited that we get to embark on this after proving ourselves to secondary education from a little over 800,000. And now in one year, we have 504,000 students enrolled in our senior high schools first year. From a little over 800,000, today we have 1.4 million students enrolled in our secondary schools. And you know, for any government, that could have an achievement in itself. I've increased enrollment from 800,000 to 1.4 million. Just clap for me. But that is not. I didn't say clap for me. I, will have, I said, for any government, they will have told you to clap for them. But another Dan Kukufuadu, the visionary president, was not satisfied. He taxed us with the responsibility to improve the quality of education. So I always say, our party is the party of manifesto plus. We do things that we did not promise in our manifestos. <laughs> not a week passes by without the ministry receiving a delegation of chiefs asking for a STEM school. The STEM agenda is moving and it's moving fast. But we also know digitalization and what the vice president has championed with the permission of the president. When you look at digitalizing the address system, 
Mobile money will enter operability. And I cannot even come because every day you turn around and he's launching something. I call him the techno politician. The technocrat politician who is digitalizing everything under the visionary president of our time. Things are getting exciting. Many of us are familiar with a quote from the celebrated American civil rights leader Malcolm X who said education, and I quote, education is the passport to the future. For tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it. Unquote. I'm also tempted to quote another American, Benjamin Franklin, who said, and I quote, an investment in knowledge pays the best interest, unquote. After improving access to secondary education, we are now enhancing the quality so that we create a pipeline of the next generation of Ghanaians from our kindergarten through primary schools, through our junior high schools, to our senior high schools. And when I talk about Manifesto Plus, we did not promise in our manifesto that we're going to transform kindergartens and transform primary schools and make them centers of excellence. But it's happening under the leadership of the president. But today we are here to talk about digitalization in our high schools. See, since assuming power in 2017, this government prioritized education and proceeded to demonstrate this commitment. When it was said free senior high school was impossible, the government went ahead to prove otherwise. And today, some 5.7 million children who are our own children, brothers and sisters, have benefited from the program. We have produced some impressive outcomes and results from the West Africa Senior High School Certificate Examination. And recently I heard somebody saying that uh, Ghana is no longer part of WASI, but we still top WASI. <laughs> Last year, Last year, two out of three high-performing WASI students in West Africa were from Ghana. And the two, and the two came from a very unique school in Bono, St. James High School and Seminary. This year, the three topmost students in West Africa all came from Ghana. And once again, two of them came from St. James. <laughs> and one from our own Laboni Senior High School. This is the legacy of Nana Adodankwa Ekufuado led government. But that is not all. Across the country, we have enhanced the state of infrastructure on various campuses and provided more textbooks and other teaching and learning materials. We have taken steps to enrich the curriculum as we chart a new pathway to future high school education. We have provided computers to schools and provided free Wi-Fi to, prepare, to propel their utilization. We have worked with teachers through their unions to procure laptops for them to aid their work. We have also boosted the reward system with an enhanced Best Teacher Award scheme. This government will continue to ensure that the education sector continue to receive, to receive its part of the government's investment. Mr. Chairman, Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, time is taken so far for Ghana and the rest of the world to achieve the target set in the Sustainable Development Goals. And for us in the education arena, we have only the next six years to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and produce lifelong learning opportunities for all. And I'm happy to report that we are on course in achieving this target, achieving inclusive and quality education for all, reaffirms the belief that education is one of the most powerful and proven vehicles for socioeconomic transformation. 
We were witness within the next few weeks and months the conversion on some of um, uh, some of our existing buildings in our high schools into a smart learning environment. Construction is about to begin in earnest. The development of new smart schools across the country. There will be an test in campuses to attend to a computer that may need repair. We are setting up a 24-hour call center to resolve all consumer issues, including complaints from our students who are going to use these devices. The future of our education system is what we are witnessing today, a live participation from our schools across the country. The first of its kind at this Ministry of Education. The future is here. We are actually embark on an agenda for the transformation of Ghana. The future of Ghana couldn't be brighter than what we are seeing. We are on a trajectory to a great future. And I can assure you, under Anandu Danko Kufuado, a foundation has been laid. We are building on it. The future is here today. Ghana will be a great participant in the fourth industrial revolution. <clears throat> we will win. And the winning begins from today. Education changes the fortunes of countries. No country has transformed itself without improving its education system. We have begun something that 10 years, 20 years from now, the world will talk about. The world will come and see Ghana, see the innovation that brought about the transformation. Historians, Mr. President, will be kind to you. You have done the impossible in the COVID era. I did an interview with a reporter. Talk about all the things that we have done. The new junior high schools we are building. The community schools we are building. The, all the innovations that we've done. Including ensuring that teacher education is four years instead of three. Which means it's costing the country more. And the reporter looked at me and said, so you are doing all this in the midst of economic challenges, and I said, that is what a visionary president does. <laughs> he had to find an antidote to the economic challenges by laying a strong and robust foundation for the economy, that this economy will stand the test of time. This is the foundation that we build upon in the years to come. Mr. President, Your Excellency, Mr. Vice President, I'm so grateful for this opportunity of being Ghana's Minister for Education at this time in our history. I'm grateful. Thank you all, and God bless you all. And posterity will be kind to his legacy, Ghana's Minister for Education, the Honorable Yao Educhum, MP. Thank you, sir, for that heart-stirring speech. In moving on, Mr. President, Mr. Vice President, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we want to understand what we mean by the future of Ghana's education. For the next few minutes, please lend your unbiased attention to the screen. What did we just see? I'll tell you what you didn't see. Because what you really must see is outside there. This was just a sneak peek of what we intend to do by way of smart classrooms, which you shall behold in its full glory outside, when the President of the Republic, together with the Vice President, officially outdoor it to us. Is that a good deal? This morning, it's my pleasure to invite Edmond Kweku Asmening 
Ativo Godswe Kwabla, marvelous Ano, student of Wesley Grammar, together with Khadija from the Accra Technical Training Center for a presentation. A round of applause for them. This nation, your nation, my nation, our nation Ghana's educational journey has come a long way from the circles of colonial rule where schools were a privilege, not a right, reserved only for the children of the elite while the masses stumbled in ignorance. To then when the flames of independence were lit and with that a burning desire to learn and to break the things of ignorance that had bound us for far too long. Then public schools sprouted across the land, opening the doors of knowledge bit by bit. Yet the path was still lined with hurdles, crumbling infrastructure, lacking resources, overcrowded classrooms, ill-equipped libraries. Policies emerged to bridge the gap, expanding facilities, training more teachers, but financial barriers remain a challenge, excluding their intelligent minds trapped in poverty's grip. Until the day a revolution dawned, the free SHS policy, a dream realized, dismantling the financial hurdles, making education a right, not just a privilege. For the first time, I, Edmond Kweku Asumi, could dream. For the first time, I, Abdulaziz Khadija, could finally dream. For the first time, we, the students of Ghana, could dream. For the very first time, as far for height our parents could not fathom, to become engineers, professors, doctors, to become fashion designers, teachers, innovators. Uplifting ourselves, our families, and our nation. Yet, even as we bask in this monumental stride, the world continues to accelerate ahead, leaving us grasping for a new digital future where knowledge is boundless, accessible, and engaging. So today, I ask you, you, and you, to dream with us. What if every student's journey was transformed? If the tools to conquer this digital age we're quite literally at our fingertips. Imagine. <laughs> what if? What if? What if tablets became our portable libraries, loaded with a universe worth of knowledge, constantly updated, nurturing curious minds to explore, question, and innovate without limits? What if? What if? What if classrooms transcended the four walls, reaching across towns? cities and nations to learn from the experts no matter the distance erasing boundaries uniting our people what if what if we had unlimited access to exam practice tools for past questions to learning tools and many many more no student and i mean no student not even a single student would be left behind we will be armed with all the tools we need to strive and excel without failure. What if all this wasn't just another what if? Yes, but the launch of a bold new reality for the students of Ghana to finally solve on shackling our minds to reach limitless heights. What if the President of the Republic of Ghana, His Excellency Nana Adodankwa Ekufuado, called mount the stage to offer us yet another innovative solution to make this what if a reality. What if? What if, Mr. President, you could kindly mount the stage to outdoor and unveil the new era of education? Thank you for that. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Eminent clergy, Christian and Muslim, the Vice President, the MPP presidential candidate for the 2024 election, Minister for Education and Member of Parliament for Bosumche, the Minister for Chieftaincy and Religious Affairs, Deputy Minister for Education and Member of Parliament for Asin South. Ministers and Deputy Ministers designate Members of Parliament. Director General of the Ghana Education Service. The Head of the Local Government Service. President of the Conference of Heads of Assisted Secondary Schools, CHAS. Leadership of Teacher Unions. Esteemed traditional rulers from Mamfe, Equiapim and Osu members of the diplomatic corps, students, fellow Ghanaians, ladies and gentlemen. On 27th February 2024, whilst delivering the message on the state of the nation to parliament, I intimated that government had began the rollout of the one tablet per student policy at all senior high schools. It is intended to be a great tool to help bridge the gap between disadvantaged and privileged students. Today, I have the singular honor of launching officially yet another intervention to, to add further impetus to what I've already described as a transformative policy that has broken myths and liberated minds, the free senior high school program. Ladies and gentlemen, education is not merely a right, a privilege. We now know that it is a fundamental right whose enforcement empowers individuals, transforms societies, and propels nations towards progress and development. As we gather here today, let us reflect on the crucial role that education plays in shaping the destiny of our nation. Indeed, education is at the center of poverty eradication. It therefore explains why, against all odds, I went ahead to propose and subsequently implemented the Free Senior High School Program, popularly known as Free SHS in September 2017, six, nine months after I took office. From the initial annual enrollment of 422,940 in 2017, some 503,000 children entered senior high school this year, the highest ever enrollment of children into senior high school in a single year in our history. With 5.10 million children having so far benefited from this SHS policy since it was instituted in September 2017. The considerable budgetary allocations within the period, totaling some 12.8 billion CDs amply demonstrate 
the shared determination by the Akufuado government to ensure that education becomes a catalyst around which the future transformation of our nation will revolve. I'm particularly proud of how in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic and other dire economic constraints, we've been able to sustain the free senior high school program and advance it even further with the addition of TVET and STEM without compromising the needs of the lower level of our education system. Again, I have on a previous occasion touted my administration's monumental strides in the digitalization agenda and singled out for praise the leadership role of my excellent and indefatigable vice president, <laughs> Dr. Mohamedou Baumia, the man all of us, including even his enemies in the MDC, called Dr. Digitalization. <laughs> Through the, his sterling efforts, Transparency, efficiency, and accountability in the public sector have improved significantly. Under my direction, government took a decision to align the digitalization agenda to education improvement initiatives, from pre-treasury all the way to the tertiary level, which is the reason for today's function. Government is determined to derive the optimum benefits in the twin areas of education and digitalization. I dare say that the investment and commensurate commitment towards education enhancement over the last seven years is unmatched by any government since the inception of our fourth republic some 31 years ago. These are seen in the areas of policy, infrastructure, equipment and retooling, furniture, scholarship, stationary provision, and enhancement of teacher welfare. One of the things that the COVID-19 pandemic succeeded in doing to us was to expose our vulnerability in so many areas of our lives, including the education sector. But it also created for us opportunities for innovation. It taught us to think, to find new ways to solve our problems. One of such was an opportunity to leverage on the digitalization option it presented to us. Indeed, the pandemic, the pandemic gave us a rare opportunity to accelerate the adoption of digital technology and shielded productivity. You'll realize that as a forward-looking government, we seize the opportunity led by the Vice President to close the gaps that were existing in our digitalization space, and most importantly, ensure that the gains from digitalization policies are broadly shared in an inclusive manner. Based on this, Government instituted a number of measures to ensure that education delivery was not hampered in any way. Students and teachers wore no nose marks or face shields, and online or technology-aided distance education became popularized. The Ministry of Education spearheaded the distribution of some 200,000 laptops to teachers in pre-tertiary institutions nationwide to enable them to derive maximum use of the computers government trained beneficiary teachers on usage and utilization of applications embedded in the computers to facilitate the preparation of lesson notes and research among other uses this meant that the use of chalk and its associated health risks to both students and teachers were eliminated, thereby making our education delivery environmentally sustainable as enshrined in the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals 3, 4, 8, and 11, as well 
as the tenets of the UN Climate Change Conferences of COPs 21 and 27. In furtherance of our digitalization agenda, in the education sector, government is proceeding with plans to distribute 1.3 million educational tablets to students in senior high school. That is one student per tablet under the Ghana Smart Schools project. The tablets are fitted with digital contents to aid research, teaching, and learning. At the tertiary level, governments plans to provide at a discounted price tablets and laptops to students and lecturers to facilitate academic work. Though largely successful, government continues to seek innovative ways to boost further the free SHS policy. Government is convinced that the next phase of free SHS enhancement will be propelled by digitalization. This will allow a seamless online and offline teaching and learning experience. Indeed, the enhanced free SHS school will be environmentally friendly, boost academic performance, fitted with interactive displays, interactive learning, and increased productivity, which is what has given birth to the Ghana Smart Schools project. The project seeks to deepen the application of IT in teaching and learning at the second cycle level. It will ultimately enhance the performance of students and prepare them better for higher learning and the competitive careers in future. The other component of the Ghana Smart School project is the provision of modernized infrastructure. Government intends to build 100 smart schools across the country. The first 30 of these will be completed this year and the remaining 70 expected to be completed in the next two years. And for the avoidance of doubt, it is planned that the 100 smart schools will be located in the following cities and towns in all 80, 16 regions. Eastern region, Kufuridia, Akropong, Chebi and Abetifi, Greater Accra region, Atimota, Ajingano, Amasamai, and Medina. Volta region, Ho, Oti region, Dambai, Ahafu region, Mim, Blanc East region, Techiman and Nkuranza, North East region, Nalerigo, Western North region, Enchi, Central region, Salpong and Kasua, Western region, Takrade, Takwa, and Wasa Ekropo, Bono region, Sunyane, Fiapre, Ashanti region, Tepa, Jabing, Mampo, and Kumase, Bantama, Upper East region, Bogatanga and Binduli, Upper West region, Wa, Northern region, Karaga, Tamale, and Yendi, and Savannah region, Damango. These smart school buildings will be fitted with solar panels as we seek to promote new and environmentally sustainable energy. In effect, these smart schools will be off the national electricity grid. They will also have, they will also have digitalized infrastructure to advance teaching and learning. The physical infrastructure takes cognizance of our unique climatic conditions and will create a condu conducive atmosphere for learning. The schools will represent a new urban landmark for urban and rural land use and planning. There will be modern, iconic facilities depicting the collective resolve of a people for transformative and futuristic education. 
The Ghana School Smart Schools project is in alignment with government's promise to enhance the free Siena High School program, leveraging on technological advancements to enable students compete globally. It is in fulfillment of the Education for Sustainable Development Agenda, a key element in the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development Goals No. 4, which prioritizes quality education, a key driver for the attainment of all 17 SDGs. It will provide the needed infrastructure to facilitate e-learning and digitalization to boost high school education in the country. Under a well thought out arrangement, each student will be provided with an electronic tablet on which our comprehensive teaching and learning management systems and digital learning contents to facilitate research, teaching, and learning. In conclusion, I am confident that together we can build a future where every Ghanaian child has access to a world-class education that unlocks his or her full potential. Let us embrace this opportunity to transform our schools into hubs of innovation and excellence. Let us work tirelessly to ensure that no child is left behind in the digital age. I want to thank the Ministry of Education, the Ghana Education Service, and the Center for Distance Learning and Open Schooling, which together have made this project a reality. The dedication of its members to the future of our nation is truly commendable. Let us continue to work together, knowing that the investments we make today will shape the destiny of generations to come. Accordingly, ladies and gentlemen, it is my singular honor and pleasure to declare the Ghana Smart Schools Project duly launched. May God bless our efforts to build a brighter future for our homeland Ghana and make her great and strong. I thank you for your attention. Please put your hands together. Mr. President, your children invite you to join them to officially unveil this great project for them and for posterity. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause. Mr. President, if it pleases you, I'd like to invite you to stand in the middle as I invite the Minister for Education, the Vice President of our Republic, the Director General of the Ghana Education Service, and the Director General of the CTVET as the first party. A round of applause for them. And so it falls to your darling boy, Edmund, to officially present you with a knob to officially unveil. And so we do this in three, in two, and in one. Behold, the future of Ghana's education. It is the launch of the Ghana Smart Schools Project. Mr. President, behold, the unveil as it comes up. Wow. And now, 
Mr. President, for one tablet, one student, I invite you to officially outdoor the first tablet to be given to our school children. And so, ladies and gentlemen, it is the state of the art tablet equipped with every modern device and software for teaching and learning. Mr. President, your children have a citation to present to you. The citation will be given to the Minister for Education, who would submit it to you. But before that, to read the citation is my sister. Take it over. Citation honoring to His Excellency Nana Adodankwa Ekufuado, President of the Republic of Ghana, with profound gratitude for your visionary leadership and your commitment to transforming Ghana's educational landscape through the implementation of the Ghana Smart School Project. Mr. President, your dedication to equipping Ghanaian students with the skills and knowledge necessary to thrive in the fourth industrial revolution is truly commendable. The Ghana Smart School Project stands as a testament to your resolute determination to provide all students with access to comprehensive teaching and learning management system digital learning content, and electronic devices, thereby democratizing education and fostering an environment of equal opportunity. Through this groundbreaking initiative, you have paved the way for a paradigm shift in Ghana's educational landscape, breaking down barriers and empowering students across the nation to embrace the digital age with confidence and competence. Your vision and steadfast leadership have set the stage for a transformative journey, one that will undoubtedly shape the future of countless young minds and propel Ghana towards unprecedented growth and prosperity. On this auspicious occasion of the launch of the Ghana Smart School Project, we extend our deepest gratitude and admiration for your priceless contribution to the nation development. You have laid the foundation for a brighter tomorrow where education is without barriers. Presented to you with the utmost respect and appreciation. Ministry of Education, thank you. Preceding the presentation, the minister has a few remarks. Mr. President, the student has said it all, and we are grateful. But Mr. Vice President, today has finally come. A week did not pass when he called me and said, what are we doing? What are we doing? Mr. Vice President, it's here today. Mr. President, we are grateful. We are grateful. And so finally, Mr. President, Mr. Vice President, Honorable Minister, if it pleases you, I would like to invite all ministers and ministers designates to please join for a group photo. A spot of music from the Ghana Police Band. Let there be celebration. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. together for unto us this day is launched the Ghana Smart Schools Project and with three happy cheers we say hip 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 but we do this because it is possible we do this because thank you Mr. President thank you Mr. Vice President respectfully I ask that you please take your seats
Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Please, man. Alright. There'll be a lot of time for that after this, I promise you. I have good news for you. Fellow Ghanaians, Mr. President, if I may use that. The Vice President of our Republic has obliged to stay on after the end of proceedings for a special forum with all students and members of the public who want to join. It is going to be beautiful here. But before that, let's just watch these two short videos. We take the vote of thanks, and then the President of the Republic will take leave of us first to take a big family photo outside and then proceed to the experiential area where we'll display the smart classrooms and disability kiosks. For the next few minutes, Mr. President, Mr. Vice President, ladies and gentlemen, I give to you the Ghana Smart Schools Project video. Preceding that, however, is the SMI tablet instructional video. Enjoy these two videos.
and in two minutes, the Ghana Smart Schools Project video. these things not because it's easy but because it is hard but it will bring out the best in us we believe it is possible here to say thank you on behalf of all the children of Ghana for whom this great gesture has been done is a student of Busumchi Girls High School make welcome Educhimwa Foku the president of the Republic of Ghana his Excellency, Nanad Rodankwa Ekufuadu. The Vice President of the Republic of Ghana, His Excellency, Dr. Mahamudu. Please, a round of applause. Edu Chumwa, you've got this. Take it again. The President of the Republic of Ghana, His Excellency, Nanad Rodankwa Ekufuadu. Bana, His Excellency Dr. Mahamudu Baumia, the, the Minister of Education, Dr. Yao Osei Educhum, the Minister for Communication and Digitalization, Members of Parliament present, Members of Council of State present, Members of Diplomatic Community present, all protocols duly observed. I deem it an honor and privilege to be given this opportunity to give this vote of thanks as such a August gathering.
Yama Munina, I am Mokwa by United Television, so any or Memun Sam Asso. Na asu se idi na chesi abu abu ano se kasi adi ni njina e mamo kasi e wo channel three six zero DSTV so onsa ebe kambi asi da e wo ma e ko e di ama this way chocolate drink di o hiya e e insoshie best point savings and loans best assurance si bra na ya mwa e wo sika FM e nwe chi o special ice insio insio na e dese e nwa e ni edika kasi special drinks e buso e wo idraso baby a mouth kakra strawberries mi ye cola na se ginger ni njina e wo e Day and you're quick to tell you, you didn't summon a bar. You're sure and some of Babetian ABA or Montpenian and other Dunk or Kufuad. You can say one student, one tablet, what done a day. Oh, and can't crop point a more. 2024 abaye betuwe, oruwa dan kwa kubo chwe akasase NPP enye krado say, 